Hi, and welcome to my Sunday Facebook Live. I'm so sorry we have a late start this morning. My dear darling producer needed that extra cup of coffee before cranking up all the equipment, all the video cams and everything. But here we are. Um, we've been off the air for the last couple of weeks because I was doing a retreat and oh my God, I had so much fun doing it. It was the first retreat I rolled out this year. It's the first retreat I've done of this style and I loved doing it and doing it has given, has given me the motivation of what to tweak and what to change for my further retreats. So I can't wait you, for you guys to join me. I'll give you more information about that later. But also I wanted to tell you that a couple of times um, I got comments from people who were missing Freddie. Now I introduced Freddie um, as part of my Christmas decorations a couple of months ago. And when we, um, and when Freddie kind of um, scurried away because it was no longer the holiday season, people noticed that Freddie wasn't there. So I asked Freddie if he wouldn't mind being a sort of a more or less permanent fixture. And he agreed, so here he is. So welcome to my show. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, um, about feeling heaviness, the heavy energy. So, um, the, the topic I've chosen is, um, are you standing in the light or lurking in the shadows? So, um, tell me if you relate to me, I have actually been receiving a lot of uh, emails from people who have been feeling a little bit heavier, um, darker, um, feeling that the world, more doom and gloom, more depression, more fear. Uh, and it seems like we're going through something and, oh, I'm starting to see your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Philip Godefroy. Good evening from Belgium. Good evening, Philip. Nice to have you on, on board. So, um, and Nora Kristen Sue, ha hello from Norway. Thank you. You know what I love? I'm going to get back to the topic in a moment, but I love that you all tune in from all over the world. And I love seeing where you've tuned in from. So please do write in the comments what country you've tuned in from. Gabrielle Snyder from Berlin, Germany. Hi. And please do write it. Even though I don't comment as I'm speaking, I do go back and read them and I love it. There's sunshine from Romania. So yes, I love, love, love hearing that you are all from, uh, from all the different countries in the world. And it's just so fun to see what countries uh, my viewers are from. So thank you for sharing what country you're from. Um, so a, to, a lot of people, including myself, you know, often feel now during this time we're going through in the world, politically and whatever, that we seem to feel a little bit heavier or more fearful. And um, I'd love for you to comment if you, if you feel or relate to that as well. A lot of people write to me and say, talk about the condition of the politics, the planet, the fear out there, uh, the hatred, the division. Uh, there's just so much division right now, divisiveness and political division that people are afraid to speak. And people are also um, feeling very um, like, well, I guess they, they feel like they're carrying a heavier load. So if anyone relates to what I'm saying, I'd love to see your comments. So basically, if you are actually feeling it in your physical body, if you're feeling it in your energy, whatever that's happening out there in the world, and you're starting to feel more fearful, fearful about the condition of the planet, more fearful about the political condition, and if you are starting to feel heavier, more depressed, more like, oh, what kind of a world do we live in? Then chances are, if you are feeling it, fearful, anxious, um, having panic attacks, chances are you are someone who is to a certain degree an empath because you are kind of absorbing the energy that is out there and that energy feels like it's speeding up. It feels like it's getting heavier and it's making you feel more depressed and down and fearful. So chances are, if that's what you're feeling, then you're an empath. And 
And what I mean by you're an empath, and many of you already identify and know that you are, and you know what this means. But if you're an empath, what it means is that you actually feel, feel it physically in your body. You feel emotions of others physically in your own body. And so what you are feeling when you feel that anxiety, that fear in your body, you are feeling the emotions of the people around you. You're feeling the emotions as you, as you commute to work. You're riding on the bus, you're riding the subway. People are afraid of whatever, financial issues, losing their jobs. They're afraid of the condition of the world. They're afraid of what their government is going to do next. They're afraid of immigration laws, whatever it is, whatever it is. And you are kind of feeling their emotions and you're picking up on their emotions. So as an empath, um, what we tend to do as a default is that we start to feel these things and then we feel this need to go out and fix it. We feel this need to go out and alleviate that heaviness. And we feel this need to go out and rescue and fix and change the world. And as we do this, what happens though, is that we start to absorb more and more of the heavier energy and we get drawn in to more and more of what I call the darkness for want of a better word. We get drawn into that heavier fearful energy because we are out there trying to fix it. Now I want to say that there are some people who are really good at going out there and, um, and, and working with these energies, but there are a lot of people because you are extremely empathic, you end up absorbing the energies and feeling it yourself. And it brings you down. It makes you feel depressed. It makes you start to feel hopeless and lost or anxious. And you get um, anxiety attacks or you feel your heart racing. So if you are someone who is absorbing those energies, but yet you're kind of drawn to feeling, I need to fix it. But yet every time you try to fix it, you feel it even worse then you are an empath for sure. And so you are the ones that I really want to talk to for, for, this particular, um, for this particular video. So if you are an empath, what I want to tell you directly, and I'm telling this to you, your work is to bring light. Your work is not to go and um, it's not to go into the darkness to try and heal the darkness. You are a bringer of light. And that's what I want you to know. Because as an empath, you have a different cosmetic makeup than from a lot of other people. I was reading somewhere that empaths actually only make up about 2% of the planet. And if you're an absolute full-blown empath, it's even less. So you are in the minority. I know that I feel these things. And so here's how we get drawn in to this uh, darkness. So, so number one is that as an empath, you feel that in order to feel better, I need to make everyone around me feel better. I need to fix this world so that I can feel better. Because uh, as an empath, you're kind of feeling the feelings. And so you're drawn to going out and fixing things. So, but the thing to remember is that as you go out to try and fix things, you have to ask yourself questions like, am I being drawn to the darkness or am I going there to bring light? And here are some of the things that um, you, you really need to look at. So for example, um, it's, it's great being an activist, but when you are an activist, are you somebody like Mother Teresa says? Are you a bringer of peace? You know, Mother Teresa always said that I will attend a peace rally, but not, um, but not an anti-war rally. So it's like even today, if you are a, um, let's say you're a vegan and you want to spread your, um, your message of veganism. So the question is, are you hating on other people who are not vegans? Because if that's what you're doing, if you're hating on them and you're going on about all the things um, that are bad for you about eating meat, that will draw you down into that 
that darker shadow energy. Whereas if you are spreading the light, if you are actually giving people sharing vegan recipes or you're giving them tips on how to make it easy and great food, that is bringing the light on something. So basically the thing to ask yourself is that when you are helping people, are you getting sucked into their darkness or are you bringing them light? That is the question that, that you need to ask yourself, particularly if you are an empath, particularly if you are someone who feels, who feels it in their body. You need to actually take care of your vessel because you don't do anybody any good when you yourself start drowning in the same darkness that you are trying to rescue other people from. If you are absorbing their dark, the, the darkness, the fears, because people are coming from fear. Even anger comes from fear. They, they mean well, they care about the planet, but somehow in a misguided way, they are lashing out and that sometimes they're lashing out at the wrong people. And if you get brought in um, because also another way that um, people can draw you in is by making you feel guilty for living in your own world of light. But remember, if you're the kind of person who, if you start to get drawn in and you start to feel it in your own body and you start to feel anxiety attacks, panic, depression, then you are actually becoming part of the problem and not part of the solution. So if you relate to what I'm saying, I just wanted to give you a couple of tips on how to take care of yourself. So tip number one is, so if, if you are surrounded by, and, and another thing is on social media, if you are surrounded by people or a feeling of anxiety and stress and panic and, and you're seeing all this strife on social media, on TV, the first thing to do is be aware that you are an empath and you are picking other people's and picking up on the energy of what's going on and to be aware that it's not your job to drown in that energy. In other words, it's not your job to help them by drowning in that energy. So be aware that this is what's happening and that your job is to be a bringer of light and not to become part of the darkness. That, so, so that's the number one thing. Be aware that you don't serve anyone by going into that dark space, that space you feel is dark. It's not your job to rescue people out of their darkness. Your job is to be the bringer of light. So remember that, remember that, that's really important. Number two, is what I do, this is what I do that works, is that I visualize myself surrounded in a ball of light. This is my own aura. I visualize my aura expanded in a, you know, in a, like a big um, sphere of light. It is not a boundary. It is not a wall. It's not to keep people out. It is my own love, my own energy of love extending outward. And so in other words, if people want to engage with me, they have to engage with me in the space of love. I'm not keeping people out, but what I am doing is I am not going to step into their darkness if that's where they choose to be. But if someone wants to engage with me, they're welcome to engage with me, but they have to engage with me on the frequency of love. I am happy to give love to everybody, even angry people, even people who are fearful. In fact, fearful people need love, but I'm even willing to give my love to angry people, but I will not step into their darkness. If they're in my sphere, they'll feel, my, uh, they'll feel the love because I have expanded my loving energy. And it's very easy for you to do. If you're an empath, you are pure energy and it's very easy for you to do. It's just a visualization. Sit quietly and see your energy expand. Um, remember that who you are is much more than this physical body. This physical body is just a very small part of you. The, the fear energy comes from believing that we only are physical. When you remember we are so much more, we are so expanded way beyond just our physical self. 
I spoke about this in great detail in my video called The Law of Attraction and the Tip of the Iceberg. Please watch that if you haven't watched that. Um, because you are just, the physical you is just the tip of the iceberg. Who you really are is so much more. You can't see it with your physical eyes, but who you really are is so much more. You have to become aware that you are so much more and know that this part of you is pure love and you take it with you wherever you go. Don't be afraid to let people know that I only engage with you if you come to me from a space of love. I'm happy to send you love, but I will not engage with you when you are in anger. Don't be afraid to say that and say that all you have is love. That's all you want. That's all you're going to give. That's all that you're going to receive. So always share love because to me, love is light. And remember, as I said, your job is to light the way for those who are in anger, fear, which is what I call the darker spaces. Your job is to light the way. For you to go into the dark with them while dimming your light is not helping you and it's not helping them. And those who are actually feeling this, you are definitely empaths. And so, and the way that you end up getting drawn into their darkness is usually through guilt by people making you feel, uh, this is how I, it happens to me. Every now and then I lose my way, my light goes out and I go into the darkness because I end up falling for people who manage to convince me that I am, um, that I am being unrealistic or that I am not um, seeing the world for what it is. Whereas to me, I feel that the people who truly only think that they are a physical being and nothing more are the ones who are living in fear and me being in darkness doesn't help them at all. So don't be afraid. The only way to lift people out of that anger and fear and into love is by constantly being in that space yourself and spreading it and sharing it. And it's become more important for us to do that today, more important than ever. So remember that. So number one is to be aware that your job is to light the way and not to become um, or to not to become part of the darkness and to dim your own light. And number two is the visualization of expanding your love, expanding your light so that other people can feel your light. But if they choose to stay in anger, let them be. It's not your job to go in there into their anger to try and change them. That's not your job. Stay in your light. When they're ready, they'll come to your light. Don't engage with people on the level of anger where you start to lose your light and lose your love and become fearful. So that's number two. And number three is to always remember that you're no good to anyone and you're no, good, you're no good to yourself when you are wallowing in the darkness yourself. So when you are in fear, when you're in de depression, that's not a favorable place to be. And in order to climb out of that, remember you are a bringer of light. Take your power back. You can always visualize that light. Don't wait for other people to bring you into the light or to bring that love to you. You can create it. As an empath, you can create it take your power back, take control back of your own life and be the bringer of light into your life and the people around you and, um, and don't get guilted into, uh, into falling back into the darkness and the shadows. So I hope that helps you. I would love to hear your questions, but I want to just respond to one question that came to me during the week. There was um, a beautiful lady who lost her daughter to leukemia. Um, I was so sad to hear that, but her daughter was in a lot of pain and fear in during her final, I guess, weeks, days, months, and she wanted to know whether um, whether her daughter felt all that pain and how it felt for her. So a couple of things I want to say about that. Um, I was in a lot of pain and fear before I crossed over and before I had my near-death experience, but 
today I don't even remember it. So in, it's, it's insignificant compared to what happens next. So I want you to know that your daughter is no longer in pain or fear at all, none whatsoever. So um, please don't worry about her. And I know that you are still feeling a lot of pain and fear for what you had to watch her go through. You are traumatized for having seen what she's had to go through. And uh, if you were here, I would give you a big hug. But I want you to know that your daughter wants you to be happy. You don't have to worry about her at all. She is in a beautiful space. She is helping you. She is guiding you. She is in the most amazing place she can be. She is no longer in pain or fear or anything. She's completely expanded. And the biggest gift you can give her is for you to do all that you can do to heal yourself and to see if you can find that place of joy again. That's what she wants to see you do. You still have your life ahead of you. She wants you to know that. She wants you to not feel guilty if you can find happiness again. And she will be guiding you to find that joy and happiness. So that's my message to you. Um, I truly feel that your daughter guided your message to me. And I know who you are. I, I, I won't say your name. Um, I know that it is something like ale, but um, I don't want to pronounce it incorrectly. But um, you will know who you are because one of my administrators, Rita Pape, she will bring this message to your attention. And I truly feel your daughter guided your message to me and um, that message was for you. And for anyone else who has lost somebody who went in a painful way, I want you to know that they want you to do whatever you can to heal your own pain, but they are fine. They're totally fine. So, and I'm sure your question helped a lot of people. So thank you. And I see a question from Monique uh, Verduin. I live in a flat with all new neighbors around me. They're bullying me and they're very loud and it feels like their energy is interfering with my energy. They are knocking and harassing me. How can I take my power back? Gosh, um, if I was able to, if this was a conversation, I would probably get more, um, more information from you. But really, first of all, I would say that you need to feel that you are in power. And I would actually, um, if, if it was me, I would knock on the door. I may even take them something like a dish of food or something like that. So if it was me, this is what I would do. I would make something like a, a, a pie or a plate of cookies or something like that. And I would knock on their door and I'd say, hey guys, we're neighbors and we need to learn to live together. And so I wanted to bring you this plate of cookies, but I just wanted to tell you that I'm unable to work or sleep or you, you don't even have to bring up the thing about their interfering with your energy, but just say that, um, can we work out something that when I'm at home, that I have certain times of the day when there is some peace and quiet and just have a chat with them, have a chat. But when you go in there, surround yourself with that ball of energy so that they are entering your space of love. Think in terms of they are coming into my space of love uh, and see what happens. I think that you will be able to shift them, especially if you walk in with a plate of cookies or something, because you're not in there to fight with them or to get angry. Just try it out and see how that goes. Okay. Um, and so we have, oh, Ma Martina, Paulus says, could you lead us for one minute through a worldwide light meditation? That is such a good idea. Let me see if I can do that. Whether, should I just do it without, I'm going to ask my wonderful producer in the background. Um, should we put one minute of music or should I just do it without the music? I'm going to ask him how easy it is or hard. And yeah. I can certainly pull up a one minute track from your last meditation, the one you did with Barry. But if you want some plain music, you'll have to give me a couple of minutes back here. Okay, if I want some plain music. If you want some, if you want that, you know that meditation yes, CD yeah. you did with Barry? Yes, which um, it's great because Martina, your comment 
reminded me, and I always forget what I have to say at these Facebook Lives. Uh, we created this meditation, which we launched on the 2nd of February, Barry Goldstein and myself. It's a guided meditation through my near-death experience so that you can experience your own NDE. And it hit number two on the Billboard charts. I was so thrilled. Oh, my Yay. gosh. And um, I'm just thinking, wouldn't it be amazing if I hit number one? But... I will leave it to the heavens. But um, let's do a, a one-minute meditation. I think Martina has such a good idea All right. of doing a one-minute meditation to expand people's aura. And what I'll do is I will give you a minute or so to come up with, the, to find some music that has no, that doesn't have my voice on it so I can do this. And in the meantime, I wanted to just tell you that people often ask me, so what is it that I drink? So today I'm drinking a smoothie. And I, I try and drink smoothies almost every day when I'm home. And, um, and the question I get is, what do I put in my smoothies? So I kind of invent my smoothies as I go. I put in whatever I feel. I put in bananas, almonds. I make my own almond milk. I use, um, I use almonds, you know, unsweetened, unsalted, un raw almonds with water. And I put them in the, um, in the blender, in a high speed blender. So, uh, and so I, uh, I use that and I put bananas and I like sweet things. So I use pineapples. I use a lot of frozen pineapple to sweeten my smoothies because I like sweet smoothies. So I use pineapples, bananas, almonds, and then I put things like chia seeds, hemp seeds, super green powder, stuff like that. So just whatever I have, whatever's in the house, I just throw it all in. Um, and, uh, and then I just make myself a nice, super delicious smoothie. It's just a great way to, I guess, to start the day. The other thing that you often see me drink is tea. Um, I like to drink black teas, but I do sometimes later in the day drink non-caffeinated green teas, but I'm not a coffee drinker, but I do drink tea with caffeine in it. So I guess that's sort of coffee, but, uh, and I usually put honey in my coffee. So. Uh, sorry, in my tea. I sometimes make masala chai where I will put a little bit of turmeric and cardamom. So it's surprising how many questions I get from people who just want to know the regular stuff about my life and about what I do. And I actually love that. I really love that because it's not all about teaching, but yeah, I love it when people ask me, so what do you drink? What's in your cup? What's in your mug? <laughs> so that's always a lot of fun. Where do you shop? Yeah, I, I shop at Sprouts, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, wherever. I even shop at, uh, at Vons. So I shop in the same grocery stores you do, um, you know, if you're in, in America or if when I'm traveling, I really do just shop in the same grocery stores. Um, so, so yeah, I love getting personal questions. It makes me feel pretty, pretty good. It makes me feel that we know we're getting to know each other. And I love knowing from you as well. I love learning from you. Where, what do you guys like to eat? What, what drives you? And that reminds me. So, you know, earlier I was, um, speaking about um, about coming from the space of love and about stepping into shadows and all. So when you want to share ideas with people, you can kind of create a caveat, say, look, I'm open to hearing you out, but I would like you to speak to me from a place of love. And, and so, and that's really like for me, I love learning new ideas. I love um, speaking to people whose views and ideas are completely different from mine. But my only criteria is that we engage from a space of love and not from a space of anger that we have opposing views. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that as well. Now, uh, Danny is trying to stay off the camera. I don't think anyone minds if you uh, get up. He's, he's here. He's like right behind me on um, get up. What are you doing? I'm trying to get you some headphones. Yes. So that you'll be able to hear the music. But I think people won't mind if you're in view of the camera. You know, last time you tried something like this, we saw your head crossing over and people were, yes, there's the headphones. Did you see his hands? No, his hands didn't pop up. There, there, 
there, his hands. So what we're going to do, will you just show your face and say hello? I think they would love that, please. <laughs> He's very strange. Indeed I am. <laughs> but if I wasn't so strange, you wouldn't be able to have headphones just materialize in the middle of the show. I know, with the strange hand giving me the headphones. Yeah, exactly. This is so I'll be able to uh, hear the music. And I'm going to give you a one-minute meditation on expanding your aura. Um, so... Whenever you are ready, dear producer, you don't have to crawl. <laughs> I'm still in my pajamas. You're not. Today you're not. He's in shorts today. <laughs> okay. So what I'd like you to do now is to just relax and to close your eyes. and just get into any relaxing position, whatever's relaxing for you, seated, lying down, on the floor, on a chair, and start to feel the tension in the muscles in your body to start melting away. Feel the tension in your jaw.
This is the energy of love. This is the energy you carry with you everywhere you go. This is the energy of light. This is the light that you bring to the world as you travel through it. This is yours forever. This is your gift. You are a bringer of light. That is your purpose in the world. Now slowly feel yourself back in your physical body. In the room you're in. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you. That was such a good idea. I'm so glad you brought it up, Martina. Thank you. Um, so I should leave you all to bask in that. But just to, oh, and I wanted to mention that music was by Barry Goldstein. He is an incredible musician. And, um, and this, so he's an incredible musician and he has done the music for all my meditations for my previous CD, which is Heaven and Experiential Journey and my near death experience meditation, which we just put out last week. And I'm so thrilled it's on the, on the billboard charts. Um, Anna Hoffman says, wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, um, I highly recommend visualizations, meditations. Thank you so much for your comments. And we do a lot of this during my retreats because I have developed different um, meditations and visualizations for different scenes, for different purposes. This is what we're going to be doing on the cruise as well. Apart from doing lectures, exercises, journaling, um, deep meditation, healing. We're actually going to be focusing on healing. So we're going to be doing all of that on the cruise that I have coming up in June. Um, so I had to mention also that there will be no show, unfortunately, for the next three weeks, because next week I'm speaking at the Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles. So if you're in Los Angeles, please do come and see me there. I'm doing a workshop at the Conscious Life expo um, you can see it on get more information on my website or on conscious life website it's at the hilton near lax near the airport in los angeles so please do drop in and see me there and then the following week i will be in europe so i will be speaking in basel doing a full day workshop in Bristol doing a full day workshop. So if you're in any of these two cities or nearby, I'd love for you to join me. I will be doing more meditations there and of course more healing exercises and so on. And we will be creating a space of love and light. And in, um, in May, I'll be at Omega and in June, it'll be the cruise. And one of the things that I do at all my retreats is that I make people aware that they need to charge their batteries, that they need to learn to receive. So my retreats, my events are very, very high energy so that you can carry this energy with you as you move forward into the world. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to be reading the comments. I always love hearing from you, always. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Now, as I said, even though I will not be able to do the Sunday Facebook Live for the next three weeks, I will pop in live from time to time, perhaps during some of the events, perhaps during some of my travels. I will be popping in live because I know I can't stay away from all of you for three weeks. You are such a beautiful group of people. You are my community. I feel like I have got my tribe in you. I love communicating with you. I love being here. I, I just, yeah, I can't stay away from you guys for three weeks. So stay tuned. I will be popping in. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you all real soon. Bye. As you look at this huge and beautiful tapestry, Everything makes sense.
You are seeing the big picture. You can see as you look back on your life how you have affected the people whose lives you've touched. And from this perspective, you can see how they went on to touch other people. Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe. And the subscribe button is here. And also I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.